All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing a uh, step-by-step still life picture. And we're going to start from the back, work forward. We're going to start on a somewhat stained canvas. On my palette, you'll see the colors that I've uh, already put out on the palette. Now, for the drawing, we're mainly going to be working with just uh, burnt sienna, maybe a touch of burnt sienna or a burnt sienna with a touch of blue in it. And we're just going to start with a very simple drawing. We'll use a little bit of my, my uh, brush uh, cleaner. In my brush bath, I have low odor mineral spirits, the true mineral spirits, not that white stuff that is synthetic. We want genuine mineral spirits or, or uh, mineral spirit based paint thinner to clean our brush out. And what we'll do is we'll take some of that that mineral spirit put it on our palette so we get a little bit of a liquid or or uh, watery consistency of the burnt sienna now we may put a little touch of blue with that to gray it out slightly so that it's not quite so strong in our mixture that's what we'll draw with on the palette uh, I'll give the list of colors this is viridian green uh, almost any brand of Viridian Green will work. I use the Rembrandt brand turquoise. I have uh, zinc white. I have cadmium yellow medium, cadmium orange, cadmium red medium. And this is a Grumbacher color, phthalo red rose, but permanent rose, alizarin crimson, or permanent alizarin will work there. I have cobalt blue. I have raw sienna and I have burnt sienna. Those are the colors on my palette that we'll eventually be drawing from. For the drawing, we're just going to be mainly working on the burnt sienna with a little touch of this blue. Now, the blue that I have here is cobalt blue, but you could use for this painting, because of the gray background, we could use ultramarine blue or ultramarine deep as well as the cobalt. I prefer the cobalt, but the ultramarine is also a very good color for this. With that done, I'm going to start with the items that are in the farthest back. Now, for the purposes of demonstration, I want you to put your brushes down and just watch how we can do a symmetrical cylinder. We are going to start with the wine glass, now, or the wine bottle. Now, I want you to notice that the, in the photograph, the wine bottle is centered in the photograph. What we're going to do is we're going to move the, the center of that wine bottle back on to the right just a little bit. We don't want it dead center. So what I'm going to do here is a center line for my wine bottle. And we're not going to be able to see the bottom of the wine bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a horizontal across here somewhere in the vicinity of, of just above the apple and the grapes and whatnot. I just need that horizontal there as a reference point. I'm going to put the top of the wine bottle about up there. And with these measurements, I can now, an equal distances out from the center line, I can come with some verticals that will help me find the width to height proportions of this wine bottle. Now, as I look at that, I, I see that it's a little bit uh, thin, so I'm going to widen this out. And if I use this as my center line, I have a reference point for getting a symmetrical bottle. So if this is the top, I'm going to look at how tall that neck of the bottle is, and that comes across about there. And then the shoulder of the bottle is going to be somewhere in here. So as I look at this, I'm putting out the parameters that I can use to get a symmetrical bottle. These bottles have to be symmetrical, otherwise they just will never look right. So using that center line and letting that center line help you get the right proportions with to height, that will help you getting the symmetrical nature. Now, if this is the center line, I'm going to try to get the width of this, the top of my bottle. 
And now with that horizontal there, all I have to do is connect my dots, as it were, connect the dots, and I now have a fairly symmetrical wine bottle. Okay? Are you with me? Any questions? All right, now once we have that symmetrical wine bottle, we can do just taking a little bit of this low odor mineral spirits. I can come in and I don't have to clean this just really perfectly. I can just take some of those guidelines out and that's going to help and prepare what we're going to do. Having taken that out, I'm going to go ahead. Now, if we look at our photograph, we see this label. This label has a little bit of an upturn, and our eye level is above the surface of the table, but it's below the top of the wine glass. So when I took this picture, my eye level was a little bit below. So where is my eye level? Well, my eye level is really close to the level of wine in that glass. So I'm going to take a look, and I'm going to suggest right here that my eye level is roughly about here. So what does that mean? On the bottle down below, there's going to be a slight upturn here. There's going to be kind of a upturn there. Excuse me, a slight downturn here because that's below my eye level, upturn here. And where does it come? Well, there's kind of a rounded edge to that label that I see here. And I see just a little hint of that label over on this back side. So slight upturn on that line, slight downturn here. And this is going to be my label. And that's going to be enough to get me started on that bottle. So, ladies and gentlemen, do thou likewise. Now, having done this, now I'm going to go back to the painting that we're going to be working on. And I'm going to do the wine glass next to my bottle. Where is the center of my wine glass? Now, I see the pedestal of my wine glass is off to the side just slightly. There's the center of my wine glass. There's going to be grapes in front of it eventually. So I've got the center there. Now where's, where does the very top of the wine glass intersect the, the bottle? Right about there. Now at this point I'm going to make a very important point and that is we are being inspired by this photograph but we are not going to be the prisoners of it. Now we may end up with a wine glass that is, I'm going to move the center line over just a little bit more. We may end up with a wine glass that's a little fatter or a little skinnier than what's in the, the photograph. We may end up with a wine bottle that's a little fatter or skinnier than what's in the photograph. We may, may end up with a bottle that's taller or shorter. No sveta. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to be inspired by this photograph, but we're not going to be the prisoner of it. Now, as I look at, at this, where does the width of the wine glass fall? It falls right about there. So if I'm going to bring this center line over a little bit more. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring the center line over to about right here, about right there. Bring it over just a little bit more. So now, when I see the far right extremity of the wine glass intersects the bottle right about here, I can take the handle of my brush. If I want to do it this way, I can take the handle of my brush, move my finger over, and boom, there is the left extremity. So you see the distance from here to here. You want to have the distance from here to here be the same as the distance from here to here. And that helps make that symmetrical. Are you with me? So th this is how we can do it. Now, it's a just using verticals and horizontals that help us in this regard. Now, as far as down here, where's that label to the top of the 
wine glass or the base of the wine glass. The base of the bowl of the wine glass comes about here relative to that white label. So that's a little way of, of helping out there. So where's the widest portion of the glass? I'm going to put the widest portion of the glass about here. Where's the, the, the level of the wine? The level of the wine looks like it lines up pretty darn close to this widest portion of the wine glass. So what I can do from this point is I'm going to bring the lip of the wine, the top lip of the wine glass in just a little bit. So the very top of the wine glass is going to have that little bit of a flare outwards towards the shoulder of it. Here is the base of my wine glass. Maybe I can freehand this at this point and have something that's close enough. I'm going to come down to about here on this thickness here. So I'm going to put in a little bit of a guideline there and a little bit of a guideline here. And now grab some more paint and I'm going to try to capture that arc. Now I'm going to get down here going from this point. I'm going to round that out like that, round this out, and I'm going to round this out, coming to about here. No, that's close enough for our drawing. This comes up just a little bit here, and I'm going to see the back of that ellipse back here somewhere when we get to the finer points of our, our painting, and then here's the pedestal. That's going to disappear behind the grapes. So what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of the mineral spirits and I'm going to take out some of these guidelines for my wine glass. But I'm not going to completely take out this edge back here because I want to show that this is, this is a crystal wine glass I'm going to be able to see through it to see the label here, but the wine is going to obscure the view of the label down here. So I'm going to wipe those out, and then I just clean up my edges a little bit. Any questions on that? Okay, do thou likewise. This is going to help me out. You see the grapes? Okay. And now there's going to be some leaves. There's some leaves up in here. There's a leaf that comes back over this way a little bit. And as I look at this, I want to come up a little bit higher over here. I'm going to bring this grape up. Maybe this grape up a little bit higher back here. Overlap the apple just a little bit. When I do something in back, I've got to work my way forward again. But we're, we want to leave this right the way it is, let it dry, because actually do, finishing off the grapes is going to be very, very simple. So do your clusters of grapes, suggest where the leaves may be, and we'll go from there.